Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. So in this context, in this particular module, we are discussing about the different approaches and the way in which you can be able to design the inhibitor for the enzyme. Now, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the traditional approach where you are actually going to have the no information about the enzyme structure or the inhibitor structure. What you require is you require the enzyme assays and you can be able to screen the different types of inhibitors from the different libraries. The, one of the major drawback of the traditional approach is that it will not allow you to improve the inhibitor because you don't know the structure of the inhibitor so you don't know which molecule which region of the inhibitor is inhibiting or which region of the inhibitor is um, important for the interactions to uh, overcome this particular problem people have started you know looking at the targeted approach so in the targeted approach you actually will know the structure of the enzyme you actually will know the structure of the inhibitors and that's how you can be able to use the different types of computational approaches to uh, you know to see how the inhibitor is binding into the binding pocket and what are the different interactions are involved based on these approaches you can be able to use either the ligand based approach where you can actually be know that this is the ligand what actually fits into the active site and then you can take that ligand and search the similar ligands into the database and that's how you can be able to identify the some of the potential inhibitors or you can also be able to use the receptor based approach where you can actually be able to study the receptor binding site and you can based on the binding site you can be able to identify the crucial interactions which is responsible for the receptor to interact with the ligands and considering and keeping those intact uh, interaction intact you can be able to design the new ligands both of these approaches we have discussed in detail in the previous lecture and we have also taken some of the case studies how you can be able to use the some of these uh, approaches now in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the computational approaches how you can be able to use them for uh, designing the new inhibitors so when we talk about the computational approaches it is it is well understood that you actually know the structure of the enzyme and you also know the structure of the inhibitors if the structure of the enzyme is not known then you actually have the possibility of uh, designing uh, a you know, enzyme structure either by the homology modeling or the de novo modeling the so prerequisite of the computational based approach is that it should have you should have the enzyme structure and as well as the inhibitor structures so in a, a structure based drug design or structure based inhibitor design what you require is you require a database of the ligands so that you can be able to select the different types of ligands from the database and you can test them into the computational approach you require a target protein and you also should have know the structure of the target protein not only that you should also know the position of the active site and the uh, binding pockets and all that okay and then you can actually be able to put them into a process which is called as the molecular docking so in the within the molecular docking what it is going to do is it is actually going to see how the ligands are fitting into the active site and the ligands are docked into the proteins active site and the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics optimizations are actually going to be done so that you can be able to know how well these ligands are fitting into the active site so the question comes what is docking so what is docking so the docking refer to the ability of to position a ligand into the active site or a predefined designated size of a protein and calculate the specific binding affinities it means it is actually going to tell you about the affinity constants then dogging algorithm can be used to find the ligand and the binding conformation at a receptor site close to the experimentally determined structures Dogging algorithms are also used to identify the multiple proteins to which a small ligand can be used. You have the, some of the important docking programs such as GOLD or AutoDox, LUDI and HEX and some of these uh, programs are free and whereas some of the programs are 
the license program so you can actually be able to use them for performing the docking and what docking is exactly doing docking attempts to find the best matching between the two molecules remember that the docking is actually works on the lock and key model so remember that lock and key model right so lock and key model says that there is a lock and there is a key right so if there is a lock there is a always a definite key right so if you can be able to make the match between the two molecules whether it is a lock and key model or whether the induced fit model so it includes finding the right key for a lock right that is a correct statement okay given the two biological molecules you can actually be able to determine whether the two molecules interact with each other if so what is the orientation that maximize the interaction while the minimizing the total energy of the complex because these are the two important parameter one fitting and the second is the free energy right so it should be have the uh, total free energy of the molecule lower and it should have the best fitting and the goal is to able to search a database of molecular structures and retrieve all structure that can interact with the query structures so the aim of the molecular docking is to achieve an optimized confirmation for both the receptor and the ligand and the relatively orientation between the protein and ligand such as the free energy of the overall system is minimized successful docking methods search high dimensional spaces effectively and use a scoring function that correctively rank the candidate dockings so you have a target molecules you can have the ligand molecules and with the help of the molecular docking you will be able to say whether this particular ligand is fitting into this particular active site or not so what is the importance of the molecular docking okay so molecular docking is actually going to identify the ligands correct binding geometry or the pores into the binding site or the binding mode whereas it is actually going to predict the binding affinity or the binding scores right so it's uh, first of all it is actually going to say at what position in this uh, particular ligand is actually going to go and bind into the target whereas it also going to tell you the scoring functions so it's actually going to tell you the affinity parameters and that can be used for uh, the comparing the molecules so that can be used for comparing the molecules and that's why the uh, molecular docking can be used for rationally designing the target molecules now when you talk about the molecular docking molecular docking can be performed in two different modes so you can actually be follow the lock and key model or you can actually be able to follow the induced fit model which means you can actually be able to do the rigid body docking or you can be able to do the flexible docking so in the rigid body docking the internal geometry of both the receptor and ligands are treated as a rigid so uh, in this case uh, you are actually going to follow the philosophy of the lock and key model whereas in the flexible docking you are actually going to have the induced fit model so an emulation on the rotation of the one of the molecule is performed every rotation the energy is calculated later the most optimal course is selected so in this case you are actually going to make one of the molecule as the flexible molecule so either you can actually be able to use the ligand as a flexible molecule or the receptor as a flexible molecule and that's how you can be able to do the flexible docking majority of the time it is ligand what you are actually going to make this flexible molecule now as, as far as the docking is concerned you can actually be able to do the docking between the different pairs you can actually do the protein ligand docking you can actually do the protein protein docking and you can actually be able to do the protein nucleotide or i'll say dna or rna docking okay so this is the protein dna rna docking so either of these pair can be used and can be studied in the docking experiments now when you want to do a docking experiments you are actually going to follow the different types of workflow so first is number 1 you are actually going to do the target selection which means you are actually going to select the enzyme and not only the enzyme you are actually also going to select the binding site okay and there are diff multiple procedures and multiple steps how you can be able to select the target 
once you have selected the target then you are actually going to prepare the target okay this means you are actually going to have the different types of procedures so you can actually be able to add the water molecules because remember when we were talking about the protein structure we said that the protein is always been present in a hydration shell so you are actually going to add the water molecules so that you are actually going to mimic the real examples and then you also going to add the charge and other kinds of procedures and that's how your target is actually going to prepare it. on the other hand you are actually going to prepare the ligand molecules so you're going to select the ligands right so you can actually when you want to select the ligands you can actually be able to select the ligands from the different types of libraries you can actually be able to use from the phytochemical libraries or you can actually be able to use the chemical libraries. For example, you can actually be able to choose the molecule from the zinc database or the phytochemical database like the Duke's database. Once you selected the ligands, then ligand is also going to prepare. So exactly just like the target preparations, you are also going to prepare the target preparation, ligand preparation. So in the ligand also, you are going to add the uh, charges you are actually going to add or you are also going to define the rotatable bonds and all that and so on because all these are you're going to do the flexible docking and then you are actually going to put it into the molecular docking and molecular what the molecular docking is going to do is it is actually going to predict the different poses of the ligand within the target proteins and that's how it is actually going to give you the information about the binding affinity of each target or each pose right taking these into account you can be able to do the uh, the analysis so you're going to evaluate the docking results and you are actually going to see the binding conformations and you are actually be considering these binding conformations you can be able to select the right pose and right conformations so to explain all these procedures we have prepared a small demo where we are actually going to use a software which is called as autodoc and where the students are explaining how you can be able to do the target selections how you can be able to prepare the target how you're going to prepare the ligand and all that how you're going to prepare the grid parameter files how you're going to prepare the docking parameter files how you're going to analyze the results and so on so in this demo the students are explaining you different steps of how you can be able to perform the docking with the auto dock welcome to the demo on protein ligand docking using auto dock tools so in this demo i will be explaining the steps involved in docking of a ligand to a receptor using auto dock tools so I will start with a flowchart of the steps involved. These are the 10 steps involved in docking. So we'll, I will be explaining each step in detail and parallelly I will be performing each step on screen and explaining them. So we will start with the first step that is procuring the receptor and the ligand. So the receptor can be, its PDB structure, its 3D structure can be downloaded from the protein data bank site given here. And it, gets, and the, it should be downloaded in PDB format. And the second thing, if the structure of the receptor is not known, then we can predict it by modeling the structure using various softwares like Modeler, Raptor X or Fire2, etc. Now, for the ligand, we can download the ligand from PDB as well as from various other public databases like Zinc Database, SpiderCam, PubCam, NCI and various others are there. And we need to save the ligands in SDF or MOL2 format. So after procuring the receptor and ligand, we'll move to the next step where we need to identify the binding site where we need where we want our ligand to dock into the receptor. So for that, if the binding site is not known, then again we can use various softwares like iTaser, etc. for identification of the binding site in a protein structure. And if the if there is a complex of the ligand with the receptor already available, then we can extract the residues which are involved in the interaction. So I will be showing how to extract those residues using PyMole. So I will open PyMole here. So in PyMole, we will go to File and here we will open the uh, ligand bound structure which I have already downloaded from PDB. So here I will be, this is the structure which I have downloaded. So here we can see 
that the ligand is bound to this receptor here and now we have to we need to know the residues which are involved in the interaction so here in the right panel we will go on in front of all it is written as a where we will click a means action and here we will go to preset and then click on ligands so it will zoom up the ligand on the screen uh, along with the interact along with the bonds and interactions so now we need to label the residues so that we can know what are the residues involved so here in front of this uh, receptor receptor name we will click on l that means label and we will click on residues so it will label all the residues now again we will go to all and here we will click on h that means hide and then click on ribbon so it will hide the residues which are not involved in the interaction now we can just rotate this this structure and note down the, all the residues which are showing interactions so i have already uh, noted down the residues which are showing interaction so these are the residues involved in the interaction of this ligand to this receptor so now we will move to the next step which is um, the preparation of the receptor for docking so before going into auto dock we need to minimize the energy of the receptor so that it shows better binding it is in its, its most stable state so now uh, we can do the energy minimization of the receptor using swiss speed view viewer so i will open swiss speed view viewer here so this is the swiss speed view viewer window here we will click on file and then open pdb file so here this is our receptor i will open this structure here in pdb uh, this it will show a pop up we can close this and then we can go on select and then click on all so it will select the complete molecule and then uh, uh, we can just uh, press control n which will perform the energy minimization of this structure so after perform uh, pressing control n here it will show the progress of the energy minimization process and then after the process is complete a pop up will come up showing the energy of this complete the global energy of this this receptor molecule so we will see the global energy of the receptor molecules here so here in this new window which opened up at the right bottom it will show the energy of this receptor which is minus 32054 now we have to repeat this step we have to press control and again so that it is further minimizes structure so i press control and again it is showing the progress and then we have to compare the energy of this new layer with the previous layer and we have to keep doing this control repeatedly repetitively we need to press control n until the energy difference between the two constituent layers is less than 100 so here the next so after performing several energy minimization steps Uh, now we can see the energy difference between this layer and the previous layer is less than 100 so now we can just click on this layer and now we will click on file and then save and then current layer so that it will save the most uh, minimum energy layer of this uh, receptor now we can just give its name receptor em that means energy minimized dot pdb i will save this now we can close this swiss pdb viewer and after the energy minimization of the receptor we need to prepare this in auto dock so we will open auto dock now now we will open our recept, um, energy minimized receptor in auto dock we will go to file then read molecule and then we will select the receptor energy minimizer receptor from the same folder so i will select this receptor em.pdb and open it so this will the receptor will be displayed on the auto dock window and then after that we will go to edit and then we will delete water so that all the water molecules are deleted and the, it will not interfere in the interactions and then again we will go to edit 
and then go to charges and we'll click on add Coleman charges so it will show how many Coleman charges have been added just we'll click OK and after that we have to go on edit and again we have to go on charges and then check totals on residues so it is showing there is two residues with non-integral charges we just have to click on the spread charge deficit over all atoms in residue so it will spread all the charges and neutralize it and then we will dismiss it and we will again check the charge total charges on the residue check totals on residue so it will it, ha, it should show no residues with non-integral charges found so we will click ok and after that we will go to, again go to edit and then misc miscellaneous and there here we will click on check for missing atoms so it should show zero residues with missing atoms so now we will click on dismiss and after that we will again go to hydrogens and then we will click on add and here we have to select polar only and in the method it will be no bond order and in, in the renumber atoms to include new hydrogens we should we have to check yes and then we will click ok so after that we will uh, save our um, receptor in PDB QT format for that we need to go on grid and then macromolecules and then choose and then we will choose this receptor so it will show the some pop up we have to just click ok and then a save dialog box will open then we have to go to the same folder and save this in save the rece receptor prepared receptor in pdbqt format so it is already written here receptor em.pdbqt we just have to click save so now our receptor is prepared we will go to edit and then we will go to delete and delete all molecules now we can minimize the auto dog window now the next step is preparation of the ligand so this is the next step again here we have to first minimize the energy of the ligand and then prepare it in auto dock and convert it in pdb qt format so for energy minimization of the ligand ligand we will be using chem 3d pro so here i have opened chem 3d pro this is chem 3d pro window here we will go to file and then open and in the same folder the same folder is open here so we will select the ligand.mol2 file here so this will open up the ligand here you can see the ligand it displays on the screen after that we have to go to calculations then mm2 and then we have to click minimize energy so a pop-up will open up we have to just click run with these default parameters so the energy minimization process will start we can see the atoms and bonds moving in space which shows that the energy minimization step is in progress so after the energy minimization is done here in the lower panel it will show calculation completed alongside it it will show the energy of the ligand the minimized energy of the ligand so it will take few seconds 10 to 12 seconds to energy minimize that is depends on the size of the molecule as well so we have to wait for few seconds and then we can save the energy minimized uh, structure of the ligand as well so still the energy minimization step is running so for energy minimization of small molecules chem 3d pro is better and for bigger molecules like a protein molecule that cis pdb where which i showed earlier is is considered better now you can see that still the energy minimization is running and the atoms and bonds are getting arranged in their minimum, minimum energy conformation ok now we can see here in the lower panel it is showing calculation completed along with the energy of the ligand so now we will save it we will go to file 
will go to uh, save as and here we will just change the name of the ligand so that we can have a different file i will write ligand em.mol2 and then save it so uh, the energy minimization of the ligand is done after that we have to prepare the ligand in the we have to prepare ligand in autodoc tools so for this again we will open autodoc and here and in autodoc we will go on ligand and then input and then click on open then we will navigate to the folder where we saved our energy minimized ligand and open it in autodoc so this is our energy minimized ligand in mol2 format it I will open it in autodoc it will show the ligand summary we will click ok and after that we will go to ligand again and then go to output in output we will click on save as pdb qt and now we will save this ligand in the same folder in pdb qt format so it's already written as ligand em dot pdb qt we will just save it now again we will go to edit delete and then delete out all molecules now the ligand preparation is also done now we will move to our next step that is the preparing the grid parameter files it contains the information about the coordinates of the grid and, and that grid will define where we need to uh, dock our ligand so we will put our grid at the site which we have extracted from the pine wood so again for this we will go to in the autodoc we will open autodoc here and now we will go to grid and in grid we will go to macro molecule and then open so we will uh, open our macro molecule saved in pdbqt format that is receptor em.pdbqt we will select this and open it here so we will click no in the pop up and then it will show it is showing like we need to correct some charges on the residues that will be done later we will be just press ok and after that we will again go to grid and then we will go to set map types and then we will click on open ligand and here we will open our uh, ligand in dot pdb qt format from the same folder so this is ligand em dot pdb qt format we'll open it so the ligand has opened up here and now we'll move to the again go to the grid and click on grid box so here this window this window here we can define the coordinates of our grid box so for this first what we will do we will select the residues which are which were involved in the interaction so we will just open this window and then we will select each residues one by one one by one so here you can see we will start with glycine 12 and then threonine 13 threonine 14 tyrosine 15 then it is glycine 201 so this is glycine 201 glycine 202 and similarly we will select all the residues here so so when we select these residues these residues will be uh, selected will be displayed in yellow so that we can easily adjust our grid box to contain all the residues in the grid box so now um, glycine glutamine 268 lysine 271 arginine 272 serine 275 then we need to go to 338 now so this is glycine 338 glycine 339 arginine 342 and then 
isolation 343 and the last residue is ASP 366 so this is 366 now we will maximize this now we can see the residues which we have selected is displayed in uh, yellow now we can just um, with the upper sliders we can move the size um, we can adjust the size of the grid box and with the lower sliders we can just move the grid box we can change its coordinate so first we will move the grid box towards the towards our binding site so that all the residues are contained in this now we will just increase the size all three dimensions so this is in now I will use the green slider so this will increase it vertically and then we can just rotate this molecules this molecule like this and we can increase this size so we can see the we can rotate this in all direction and just see all the residues are contained in the grid box or not so here you can see it is there now we can just move our grid box little this side because it is containing some unwanted residues as well so we move to move them to this side now we will again rotate the molecule and see the grid box has moved too far so we will just bring it back using the red slider we will try to keep the residues in the middle so that we can adjust it properly so now just reduce the size of the grid box so that it doesn't contain the unwanted residues and again rotate you can see this side some residues are going out so again we will increase the size and we can move it little this side so now we can see the residues are almost inside increase this little bit more and then we can just rotate it in all directions you can see all the residues are inside only you can reduce the size this way a little bit and then move it Now you can see all the residues are inside the grid box. So we will just go to file and close saving current. So the uh, grid, grid parameters we have set and now we not need to save this grid parameter. So we will go to open, uh, grid and then we will go to output and then save GPF. GPF means grid parameter file. So we need to save this in the same folder we have saved all other files you can write it like grid dot gpf it is important to write dot gpf in this file name 
now we will save this and after that again we will go to edit then delete and then delete all molecules so it, it will delete everything now we will go to the next step which is the preparing the docking parameter file so now we will prepare the docking parameter file that is dot dpf file so for that again we will go to auto dock and then we will go to docking here and in docking we will go to micro molecule and that set rigid file name so again we will go to the same folder and here we will save our in for rigid file name the receptor in this docking is rigid that means it will it will not change its conformations conformation so we will select the receptor energy minimized receptor and then open it and nothing will be there on the screen but it's fine then we will go to docking and then ligand and open then we will open the ligand from the same folder in dot pdb qt format so it will open up uh, a pop up here we need to and it will also show the ligand on screen so here we will press on accept after that we will again go to docking and in docking we will click on search parameters in search parameters we will click on genetic algorithm here it is here we can set the GA runs like how, how many conformations of the ligand we need to we need the auto dock to create and then dock so it is set to 10 it can be set to 50 100 depending upon the requirement then we will press accept and then after that we will again click on docking and then we will click on docking parameters it will open a pop up we have to just click on accept and after that again we will go to docking and then we will save the files we will click on output and then click on lamarki and ga and we will navigate to the same folder and here we will save the file in doc dot dpf format so i will write doc docking dot dpf it is again important to write the dot dpf so that it will be easily read by the I will save it and after that again we will go to edit and then de delete and delete all molecules and then now our preparation part is done so we will go to the next step that is generating the docking job file through raccoon so we need to run raccoon here raccoon is another software which comes embedded with the auto dock so to open this raccoon we need to go to command prompt i will open command prompt here i will type cm cmd and so this is the command prompt window so in command prompt we have to go to the folder where, where we have save the our where the auto dock is installed so here i will go to that folder i press cd dot dot and then i will write cd space in brackets i have to write the path of so this is the command prop, prompt window now first we need to the active folder is different so first we need to go to the c drive and then open the folder where our auto dock is installed so i will type cd dot dot and then again cd dot dot so now c, c drive is active now i will go to the to that folder so we have to type the exact pathway here cd space braces on program files x86 i will close the braces And press enter so now the program files folder is active 
we'll move to the MGL tools. We need to type the correct spelling and correct pathway, otherwise it will show some error. And then after this, we'll, uh, the raccoon is embedded in this folder only. So just we will type python space raccoon, we need to type the correct spelling of raccoon dot py. Then, and then press enter. After pressing enter, a raccoon window will open up. This is the raccoon window. Now here we will perform our docking. So first we will select the ligand. We will go to add ligand and we will select the ligand here from the same folder. So this is our energy minimized ligand in PDBQT format. So I, will, I have added that and then we will click on receptors and in receptor we will add receptor file and then we will go to the same folder and then click on our receptor file and open it in here so it will add the receptor file in raccoon then we will go to maps in maps we need to load the our gpf grid parameter file so i will click on load gpf template and again in the same folder where we have saved here it is grid dot gpf is there we will just add it here and after that we will go to docking and docking will click on select docking set setup from template and here load dpf template now here we will select the dpf file the docking parameter file which we created which is in the same folder so now the dpf file is also open now we will click on vs generation so it will it will open up another window now here we need to set the directory where the output will be saved so we will set directory will choose the same folder here also so we will go on desktop and desktop will go to the folder which we created so this is the docking demo in the folder I will select that folder, it will say that folder is not empty, that is not to worry, we will just click on yes. Now we will click here on generate, so it will generate a job for docking. It will show a pop-up, pop one docking job has been successfully generated in this folder. We will click on ok and then now we can close the raccoon here. And after that we will go to the that folder and then here we can see a new folder has been created as a receptor em again here we can see one folder receptor em underscore receptor em that means ligand em underscore receptor em that means this ligand is being docked to this and the output will be saved in this folder and one more file is there run vs.bat we have to click on this file and then um, a command prompt will open up and then it is saying press enter to start just we need to press enter and the docking job will start here and now we have to wait for some time so that the docking is completed see here our docking is completed so now we will go to the analysis of the dock complexes so for that we will open auto dock and here we will go to analyze and then click on dockings and open and then we will move to the same folder here we can see a dot dlg file has been created we will open this file in autodoc <coughs> so it is showing read 10 doc confirmations from the ligand receptor dot dlg we will click ok and after that again we will go to analyze then on macro molecule we will click on open so it will automatically open the macro molecule we have selected and after that again we will go to analyze and confirmations and click on play so it will open another pop-up which will be used later for saving the complex after that again we will go to confirmations and click on load so here it will show the binding energy of the confirmations so this is the confirmation with the lowest binding energy that is minus 2.2 so now we will again go to analyze and click on clusterings and click on show 
so it will open up a graph that will show the uh, graph between number of conformations and the binding energy so number of conformation in each clusters and binding energy so here we can see the cluster with the lowest binding energy is having only one conformation whereas this cluster this is having three conformations so now we will save the conformation with the lowest binding energy so for that we, we need to select this confirmation with lowest binding energy first and then click on this icon so it will open up another window here we will click on write complex and then we will save this in the same folder so here i will write c1 that is complex one and then click on save it will be saved in dot pdb qt format so now what we can do we can open the folder which we created and then here uh, we can open the new folder created by autodoc and here we can see the dot dlg file we can open it in notepad and see the binding energy of the list of binding energy of all the conformations it will be at the last so this is so this is run 5 then run 6 after run 10 it will show the a table of binding energies so here it is this is the table showing the binding energy the run number the mean binding energy of the cluster and the cluster uh, how many confirmations are there in each cluster so this we can just copy and paste in excel or in notepad for our reference i will close this dot dlg file now we have analyzed the binding energy of the uh, receptor of the complex then the next step is the visualization of the receptor ligand complex so this can be done by various softwares like pymol lickplot or discovery studio so here i will be showing it in discovery studio so i will open discovery studio here and then i will go to file then open then i will open this c1 which we saved so it will it will open in discovery studio so here we can see that the our ligand is bound here this is the ligand so we can click on this ligand to select it it will, it will be displayed in yellow and then we will click on define ligand so it will zoom the ligand here and then we can click on ligand interactions so it will show the uh, ligand the amino acids which are interacting with the ligand then we can just double click on residue and again double click so that all the residues will be selected then we will right click go to labels and then click add and here in place of atom we can select amino acid and we'll click ok so it will the it will label the amino acids which are involved in the interactions uh, we can go to interaction options here and then it is showing what are the interaction present like hydrogen bonds electrostatic and unfavorable bonds here we will click on show distance so it will show the distances of the bonds now we can analyze this like which type of the green bonds are hydrogen bonds and the orange ones are electrostatic bonds and the red ones are few unfavorable bonds also because of these unfavorable bonds we find the binding energy is higher that is only minus 2 point something so now we can save this this is structure as well we can take the image from here and then we 
we will go to file save as we will select here as image file and we can give a file name to it and then save it in the same folder so this is all with docking of a ligand with receptor so thank you so i hope that you have uh, understood the different steps and the students have very in a detail they have explained how you can be able to perform the different task to perform the docking now what are the usage of the docking right you can actually be able to use to develop the target right so you can be able to define the drug targets you can be able to study the protein ligand interaction which is very difficult to perform under the non silico conditions you can actually better understand the machinery of the life you can actually be able to understand the enzyme inhibitor class you can actually be able to identify the antigen antigen complex and other type of complexes you can actually be able to use the protein therapies so you can actually be able to define the different types of targets you can actually be able to use the molecular docking to even um, you know engineer the proteins and that's how you can be able to use them for a more efficient working uh, although the reliability of the docking method is not so high they can be provide new suggestions so they can actually one of the major our idea is that actually going to reduce the time and the false positive rate can be reduced using the several scoring functions in a consequence scoring still so what are the applications of the docking so applications are first application is that are going to be used in the virtual screening so docking with the scoring function can be used to quickly screen the large database of protein drugs in silico to identify the molecules that are likely to bind the protein target of the interest and this is actually going to reduce the time it is actually going to reduce the it is actually going to make the cost effective and it's going to answer a lot of questions because in a single day you can be able to screen 10 different types of targets you can actually be able to define screen the thousands of molecules to know whether these molecules are what is the probability of these molecules and that you can do in a virtual screening number 2 you can actually be able to use the drug discovery so you can if you suppose you have a lead then you can actually be able to do the lead optimizations so docking can be used to predict in where and which the relative orientation of a ligand binding into the proteins this information may be in turn be used to design the more potent and the selective analogs so drug discovery is also a very very important aspect of the docking and then the third is bioremediations so protein ligand docking can also be used to predict the pollutant that can be degraded by the enzyme so by by the bioremediations you can actually be able to select uh, the pollutants which are actually going to be targeted by the enzyme and that's how you can be able to use the specific enzyme to reduce the level of that particular pollutant and this is very very relevant when we talk about the applications of the enzyme so when we talk about the application of enzyme you will understand that there are so many enzymes which are available to uh, you know reduce the level of pollutants so what we have discussed in this particular module we have discussed about how you can be able to design the inhibitors uh, what we have discussed we have discussed that uh, uh, enzyme has a uh, definite uh, areas to bind the substrate or the inhibitor and that area is called as the active site uh, in some cases you can also have the allosteric site where the enzyme is also going to interact and inhibit the enzyme uh, and as far as the in, in inhibitor designing is concerned we can have the multiple approaches you can have the traditional approach where you are actually going to use the enzyme assay as a screening criteria and you can be able to test the different types of inhibitors and that's how you can be able to select the inhibitors which is inhibiting the enzyme apart from that you can also have the targeted approach where you can actually have the ligand based approach receptor based approach or the computational approaches to design the different types of inhibitors so with this i would like to conclude my lecture in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects of the enzymes thank you mm -hmm.